last couple of days. We have Jesus and his guys traveling down the Jordan River, making good progress on this day. In this case, we have Jesus looking to the hills, wondering if he could sidetrack his trial, bypass his test, by maybe hiking into the hills and finding the same place uh, where Elijah had hid out, a place where water was flowing, where birds actually brought food morning and night to him. And he stayed there for quite some time in hiding, just him and God and the birds, until the brook eventually dried up. This is what it looks like. And Jesus may have been wondering if in February there would actually be water up there. And could he make his escape? How long could he hide in the hills and not have to face his Jerusalem? But the time comes as it did for Jesus, when we have to face our own Jerusalems. We have to face the pain that's in front of us, and we can't escape. Lots of ways to distract ourselves, sometimes even busyness, or the, the elusive search for the American dream, or uh, for riches, for security, for satisfaction. Ultimately, we can't run and hide forever from our trial, from the thing that we have to face and go through, our path through death, in the resurrection. In Jesus' case, he knew he had to keep heading down the Jordan, and he couldn't hide in the Kirith. He would be the water for the whole world, and he's that water for you and me now. He is a brook that never dries up. Once we learn how to find that place, how to drink from those waters, uh, like the woman at the well in John chapter 4, we can drink and be satisfied. Have you found your Kirith ravine? Have you found your escape from the trials even while you walk into the teeth of Jerusalem?